Uh, what about the future? Well, as far as clinical pharmacology is concerned, my own specialty, I'd like to see more recognition of its importance because I think in the last 15 to 20 years that has been underestimated. The discipline grew up in the late 1950s through the 60s and 70s, became very strong throughout the 80s, but then in the 90s, and I think partly due to the malign influence of research assessment exercises, what we now call the research excellence framework, whatever that means, uh, the clinical pharmacology was regarded as being not as important as other specialties, which were thought, I think wrongly, but thought to contribute more to the, those uh, research assessment exercises. And so the numbers of clinical pharmacologists during the 90s and in the early 2000s started to decline. This, I think, had a bad effect on teaching of therapeutics and that secondarily will have knocked on to reduced quality of care of patients because every doctor is a prescriber and every patient receives some medicine or other at some time. And unless you understand the principles of therapeutics and clinical pharmacology, how drugs work, how to use them, how to avoid adverse reactions, then you are not going to practice medicine to the, your best ability in my view. In the last 10 years or so we have made efforts at the British Pharmacological Society to reverse this trend through many activities such as talking to uh, regulatory authorities, General Medical Council, government organisations of one kind or another, through talking to the press to publicise the need for clinical pharmacology, through studies of the relevance of clinical pharmacology and of its financial benefits to the health system. We have tried to increase the profile of the subject and have succeeded to some extent. The numbers of clinical pharmacologists now in the country have ceased to fall and are now again on the rise in parallel with the rising numbers of other physicians and doctors in other specialties. So that's good news for the subject but there's still a long way to go and I hope that, uh, that those who are involved in having influence in the development of subjects such as clinical pharmacology will begin or perhaps to continue to realise how important it is for general medical practice because everybody uses medicines and everybody takes them. So I think for the future of the subject I think that's uh, how I would like to see it develop. As to the future of general medicine, I would like to see an end to all the bureaucratic uh, control that we have at the moment. I think that regular appraisal, uh, regular revalidation is politically correct. It looks good to the public that doctors are being scrutinised all the time. And I don't have any objection to proper scrutiny but I think that the systems we have are too bureaucratic and in many respects unnecessary. So I'd like to see an easing off of that regulation. I'd also like to see increased continuity of care, particularly by junior doctors. And I think the junior doctors do a terrific job. They work hard. The, the job they do is not easy. And in contrast to when I was a junior doctor, when you could be on duty for quite long periods of time, but not doing very much for part of that time. Nowadays, the doctors are on duty for short periods of time, but they are busy all the time, and the job is really very stressful. There is poor continuity of care because they don't have the time to continue following patients through, and I'd like to see that change. I think. The only way I can see that happening is for more doctors to be appointed and I think that politically that's unlikely to happen because the budgets are constrained and this government certainly and I suspect most governments would be reluctant to uh, fund greater numbers of doctors. The Treasury is unlikely to want to, to uh, give funding for that kind of activity but I can't see any other way of improving the ways in which junior doctors are carrying out their difficult tasks other than by sharing out the pressure 
the burden of care that they currently have to have to see to. Uh, so I hope that some enlightened health minister, uh, of whom we have seen very few in recent years, <laughs> uh, may see the importance of that and perhaps persuade government and the treasury to uh, fund medicine in a different way and fund doctoring in a different way. I can't say I'm very hopeful of that.